والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن اشكر لله ومن يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد Respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As we continue with the tafsir of Surah Luqman Chapter 31 in the Quran And after we have discussed several points in the early verses of the surah now the quran finally introduces us the surah introduces us to this figure by the name of luqman a man who was known for his wisdom a sage of his time who was wise and he gives good admonishments to his son and to people around him and we see that this is the first time Luqman is discussed in the Quran and in fact he's only mentioned in the surah in chapter 31 and as we mentioned in the first session that we had that Luqman was not a prophet but Luqman achieved what some prophets achieved and that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him wise. And this was a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed him with. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ And we have given Luqman the wisdom. What does this mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say that Luqman became wise on his own. Allah doesn't say that the wisdom was something that he acquired as a result of hard work, as a result of this and that. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We gave, we blessed Luqman with wisdom. And as we mentioned Wisdom is one of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give a person. After faith, the next thing that a person should ask for is knowledge and wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that to this lucky man, Luqman. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةِ Whoever has been given the wisdom, then this person has been given khayran kathira. This person has been given so much. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to this man, Luqman. And that gift is greater than power. It's greater than anything that a person would want. Greater than wealth, greater than anything. This is why Luqman, he rejected power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him the option to be a leader, to be in a position of power. But Luqman, he opted out of it. And he chose the afiyah. He chose what is better. And he, refrain, and he protected himself. So here is a very important point, And that is that wisdom and knowledge, these are given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, everything is given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your wealth, your knowledge, whatever you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are some things that we can see that we have acquired and there are other things that they have a blessing to them. So for example, you go and you study, you go and you learn, you could learn so much or you don't learn, you don't understand what's being taught. Who is it that gives you the power to understand? Who is it that gives you the power to comprehend? Who is it that gives you the power to accept and absorb the knowledge? And not only are you supposed to absorb it, but you're supposed to give it to others. In a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, العلم نور وضياء يقذفه الله في قلوب أوليائه. Knowledge, real knowledge, is a light and ضياء, another something that illuminates. يقذفه الله 
في قلوب أوليائه. الله سبحانه وتعالى will place it in the heart of the أولياء. Those who are close. Those who are attached with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ونطق به على لسانهم. And Allah will allow that knowledge to speak on their tongues. So knowledge is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And another hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq عليه السلام. He says, ليس العلم بكثرة التعلم. Knowledge is not only on how much you go and you seek knowledge and you go and you learn. إنما هو نور يقذفه الله في قلب من يريد الله أن يهديه. Knowledge is a light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places it in the heart of the one who Allah wants to guide. فَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ الْعِلْمِ Then the Imam, Imam Sadiq, who established the school of knowledge. He's the one who, the knowledge of Rasulullah and the knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt, most of it was, was given to us from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, فَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ الْعِلْمِ If you want knowledge, فَاطْلُبْ أَوَّلًا فِي نَفْسِكْ حَقِيقَةَ الْعُبُودِيَةِ If you want to be knowledgeable, if you want to be wise, if you want to be considered a knowledgeable person, first you have to go and find in yourself the servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and become a abd of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with the knowledge. في نفسك فاطلب أولا في نفسك حقيقة العبودية. Go and become a slave, not of other people, not of this dunya. Because this dunya is what distracts us from seeking knowledge. This dunya is what brings us away from our goal. One of the goals is to seek knowledge and learn. Go and be a slave of Allah, then you're not going to be a slave of any distraction. Then you're going to be able to seek knowledge. فَاطْلُبْ فِي نَفْسِكْ حَقِيقَةَ الْعُبُودِيَّةِ وَاطْلُبُ الْعِلْمَ بِاسْتِعْمَالِهِ and seek knowledge by using it. Some people, they just, want to, they just want to absorb, but they don't want to give it out. Use that knowledge. Benefit yourself, benefit your life, benefit people around you from what you have learned. وَاسْتَفْهِمِ اللَّهِ وَاسْتَفْهِمِ اللَّهَ بِفِهْمِكِ And ask Allah to help you comprehend and help you understand more. So become a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a servant to Allah. Use the knowledge and ask God for the guidance so that this knowledge helps you. Allah describes a group of people, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاتِ كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارَ Those, some groups of people who were given the Torah, they were not benefiting from it. They were not using the light of the Torah to benefit them. They were just carrying it. And then Allah says, كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارًا Just like a donkey is carrying something. A donkey could be carrying a million dollars on its back, but it won't be able to help it because the donkey doesn't know what it's carrying. Similarly, with us, when, we're, when we have the Qur'an, when we have resources of knowledge, we have to try to benefit from them. Now, Luqman, he was given that knowledge. Well, Allah says in the Qur'an, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ so yes, Luqman, he prepared himself to absorb the knowledge, but the knowledge and the wisdom was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have several stories, and in this surah we will describe several of the admonishments. We're going to talk about the admonishments of Luqman. But first, how did Luqman become wise? We have many stories of the wisdom of Luqman. We have hadith, it says that he used to be a, a lumberman. He used to go and collect wood. We have a hadith that says he used to be a shepherd. And in this hadith, it says that he, he had a master, a master who ordered uh, Luqman to slaughter a sheep for him. So it's suggesting that he might have been a slave at one point in his life, or he might have had a master, someone who he used to work for. So he used to, he had this master and this master tells him, I want you to go and slaughter a sheep for me and I want you to bring the two best pieces of that sheep. So what are you going to bring? The thigh, the, 
breast. What are you, what are you going to bring? What are your favorite pieces of the meat of an animal? So Luqman, he goes, he slaughters the sheep, and he brings the tongue and the heart. So the master, he tells him, how come out of all of the pieces of meat of the sheep, you chose the tongue and the heart? Luqman did not say anything. And this is the sign of a wise person, someone who doesn't always speak. Then the master, he tells him, okay, now I want you to go and bring, go and slaughter a sheep and bring me the worst two pieces, the worst pieces that you could find in the sheep. So once again, he goes and he slaughters the sheep and he brings the tongue and the heart once again. So the master was surprised. He says, when I said bring the best pieces, you brought the tongue and the heart. And when I said bring the worst pieces, you brought the tongue and the heart. What is it? What's going on? Are you confused? He said, no. I brought the tongue and the heart because if they are pure, there is nothing greater than the tongue and the heart. And if they are not pure, then there's nothing worse than the tongue and the heart. Luqman is trying to send a message, talking about my heart and my tongue. Talking about our heart. We have to tame our heart. We have to control our heart. We have to purify it. This is why Allah talks about وَنَفْسٍ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا You have to purify your soul. You have to purify your heart and your tongue. You have to purify it. So if it's good, if it's pure, it could be the best thing for you. And if it's not pure, then it could be the worst thing for you. And this is the message that Luqman is trying to send. Of course, Luqman, he has many words of wisdom. One day, he saw a man. فَرَآهُ رَجُلْ كَانَ يَعْرِفُهُ قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ So he saw him, he, a man saw Luqman who knew Luqman before Luqman became so wise and someone who was a sage and someone who used to, you know, give out knowledge and words of wisdom. So the man who used to know him, apparently they used to work with one another, they used to herd sheep with one another, something. So he tells him, Alasta abd bani fulan, aren't you the slave of this family? Aren't you the abd of this family? Qala bala, he said yes. Then he tells him, قَالَ فَمَا بَلَغَ بِكْ مَا أَرَى Then what made you so great? What made you have so much wisdom and so much knowledge that people come to you and they seek advice? What made you become such a great person? People used to seek advice from Luqman. And this is a sign of a wise person. You go to someone who has knowledge and you seek knowledge from them and you seek advice from other people. So... Luqman, he answered, what made him so wise? What were the secrets to the wisdom of Luqman? Qala qadarullah. First, he says, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is God having an impact on my life. Wa adail amanah. And giving the trust that people have trusted me in. If someone has trusted you with something, whether little or whether big, you have to keep that trust. وَصِدْقُ الْحَدِيثِ And being honest. When I speak, I am honest. I don't lie. I don't tell lies to other people. وَتَرْكْ مَا لَا يُعْنِينِي And leaving things that do not concern me. Do not, getting, not getting involved with things that do not have to do with me. So let's go through these one by one. First, قَدَرُ اللَّهِ Luqman, he became so great. But when he was asked, why did you become great? He didn't say it was me. He didn't say it was my hard work. He didn't say it was my struggles, my blood, sweat and tears. He said, this is God. He said, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to learn from Luqman, and this is the sign of a wise person, that you give credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone who right away, they want to take credit for themselves, and they say, I did this and I did that, and they allow their ego to control them, that's not the sign of a wise person. That's not the sign of a knowledgeable person. Knowledge and, wis and wisdom and pride and ego do not go together with one another. If someone has knowledge and they have pride and ego, that ego will be the reason that they will fail at one point. It will be the reason of their demise. It will destroy them. 
So he is not being arrogant. He says, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's giving credit to Allah. He's saying, God made me who I, who I am. If God has guided you, if God has allowed you to do anything, don't say, I did this and I did that. Because who is it that helped you? Who is it that guided you? Who is it that supported you in whatever good that you have done? It's all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaytan, Iblis, Iblis used to be a knowledgeable. Iblis was knowledgeable and he still is knowledgeable. But Iblis, his arrogance caused his demise. Iblis knew everything. Iblis used to worship God. He used to pray and worship for years and years. Thousands of years according to the hadith. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, I want you to obey me in prostrating to Adam. Here his arrogance came in place. And he said, you created him for out of soil and you created me out of fire and I'm greater than him. And that's what caused his destruction. So if you want to be great, if you want to be remembered, if you want to remain, then what should you do? You have to give credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Associate yourself with Allah. Attach yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want any, any project, anything that you're doing, do it for God, it will remain. If you do it for this dunya, if you do it forever, it's going to last as long as this dunya lasts. It's going to last as long as your lifetime lasts. But if you do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then even after you leave, you will continue receiving reward from what you did. And in the Akhirah, the reward is great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us examples. The martyrs. The martyrs who gave their life in the way of Allah. Allah says, don't consider them dead. They're alive. We don't see them. Anyone who did anything for God and is purely with God, then this person is remained. This person remains for as long as people remember. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he's not forgotten. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, there have been many wars and battles, millions and billions of people have died in wars and battles. Millions of people have revolted, revolutionaries. But Imam al Hussein is alive. Imam al Hussein is remembered every year. Why? Because Imam al Hussein, Ashhadu anna katharullah wa ibn tharih. You are the one who revolted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we learn from Luqman, he says, it is Qadarullah, it is God that made me great. It is God that gave me this power and this position. This is one. Second, he says, وَأَدَاءُ amana." If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place that wisdom in your heart, because we said the wisdom and knowledge comes from God. Now, how does God put it? You have to do certain things. One is Adā'i amana." You have to be trustworthy. People have to, if they give you something, whether little or small, you have to, you have to have people trust you. When you make a promise, when you tell someone, I'm going to do something, when someone gives you something to hold, hold on to that. And give it to them when they ask for it back. Allah says in the Quran, and Adā' al-Amana, keeping your trust, is one of the most important Practices that the religion of Islam encourages. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu la takhoonu Allah wa rasul wa takhoonu amanatikum wa antum ta'lamoon. O you people who believe, do not betray God and betray the Prophet and betray your trust that you have with people. Your covenants with people. You make an agreement with someone. And here, the beautiful thing, we have many narrations that say a trust must be kept even if it's with a good person or a bad person. Some people they say, yeah, but this person is not Muslim. This person is this and that. I don't, it's okay if I don't keep my promise with this person. Who said that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was known as a sadiq al-ameen, the trustworthy and the truthful one. By who? By the people of Quraysh. People that did not believe in Rasulullah, they did not accept the message of Rasulullah, but yet they trusted Rasulullah. They would, some of them, they would give their money and they would ask Rasulullah to hold on to their money and their wealth. Why? Because they know he's a truthful person. They know he's an honest person and that's one quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have that, Allah will give you wisdom. 
Another is Sidq al-Hadith, being truthful. Being truthful is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. The, be truthful with yourself before with other people. Because someone who's not truthful, yes, they might be misleading, they might be fooling other people. Maybe other people are going to believe the lies. But at the end of the day, God knows you're lying and you will know you're lying. And this creates, this creates a feeling of cognitive dissonance where when someone is lying, they're going to know that they're not honest. They're going to know that what they're saying is not truthful. At the end of the day, someone who's not truthful, they're lying to themselves. You might be able to fool other people. But when you fool yourself, you're not going to be happy. You're going to know that you're a fraud. You're going to know that you've cheated people. You're going to know that what you have built, whether it's an empire or something very small, it's built on lies. And lies, they're not going to take you so far. You're going to get caught one day or another. So the wise person is someone who says the truth. Because wisdom is telling people the truth and telling yourself the truth. But if someone is lying, then they're not going to be able to tell themselves the truth. They're going to mislead themselves and they're going to mislead other people. Someone who doesn't give good advice is someone who's going to give in to the worldly desires, to this and that, and they won't tell a good, a genuine advice. But someone who's wise, they're going to give a genuine advice to themselves and to other people. Even if it might harm them financially, it might harm them in one way or another, but at least they'll know that they're honest. And that is a sign of someone who's wise. Another point, the fourth, is Tark ma la yu'nini. He says one of the reasons why I became what I became is because I do not involve myself in things that do not concern me. This is something very important. Some people, they have to involve themselves in everything. They hear a conversation going on here, they come and they have to get it. They go and they hear something there, they, have, they see a chat going on and they have to say something. Sometimes it's better to just hold back. Sometimes it's better to just control our tongues and control being involved in things that do not concern us. Some people are nosy. They have to get involved. They have to say something. Sometimes it's better to just watch and listen. Don't, you don't have to always say everything. Even if you know, you don't always say everything that is known. Many times, when we get involved in things that do not concern us, we end up hurting ourselves first. We end up doing things that end up harming us. So... If someone has that habit, try to stop that. Try to control that habit. It is said in a story, and this is a story that is accepted by all Muslims, that Umar ibn al-Khattab, at the time that he was in power, he used to have a habit of trying to find the faults in people. So one day he's walking and he hears that there is sounds coming from a house. Sounds, loud, laughing sounds. So he goes and he peeks over the wall of the house and he sees there's a man who's drinking. There's a man who has... So the man, he tells him, you might have caught me drinking. You might have caught me doing one thing that's wrong, but I caught you with three errors. First of all, Allah says in the Qur'an, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And do not spy, and you're spying on me. Second, Allah says in the Qur'an, وَأْتُوا الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِهَا And enter the homes from their door. Don't enter from the back, enter from the side. And third, Allah says in the Qur'an, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا When you enter into a house, say salam. Say salam, let that be the first thing. So, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he tells him, okay, I caught you doing one and you caught me doing three wrong things, so I'm not going to talk about it and you don't tell anyone what I did. This is the 
we should make it a habit to not involve in our, ourselves in things that do not concern us. Something that's going on in people's house doesn't concern me. I shouldn't go and get myself involved in what's going on in people's house. Yes, sometimes we do. We also have a we have a very important um, obligation of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. But that has conditions. If someone's doing something in their own house, I don't have the right to go in their house and try to find the faults of people. Because if I find the faults of people, I'm going to expose my own faults while doing so. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ And we have given Luqman the wisdom to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, what is wisdom? What is the meaning of wisdom? Some people they say wisdom is prophethood, but this because we have hadith that says Luqman was not a prophet, so we know that that's not the case. Wisdom is doing what's right. Wisdom. Many many scholars have given many opinions of what wisdom is. However, wisdom, according to the Quran, and this is something very, you know, we have several types of tafsir. One tafsir, it's called tafsir al-Qur'an bil-Qur'an. Meaning trying to find the meanings of the Qur'an using the Qur'an itself. Because the Qur'an yufassiru ba'dahu ba'dha. It interprets itself. So what is wisdom? Allah says in the Qur'an, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنُشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ We gave Luqman wisdom that you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so thanking Allah is a sign of wisdom. Thanking Allah and appreciating God, that in itself is the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. And appreciating is a great blessing. Appreciating God is a duty. We have to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Appreciating and showing thanks, saying shukran lillah, appreciating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. This is not only the sign of someone who's a mu'min, someone who's a believer. Your common sense, anyone with ethics, anyone with morality, anyone, you don't even need to be a Muslim, a, a religious person to understand that you have to show appreciation. We appreciate people in our lives. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we appreciated God? Do we show appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Scholars, they say, scholars of theology, they say that, we, we humans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with the fitrah that leads us to find God. One of those things is shukr al-mun'am. Even if you don't know who God is, you don't know who created you, but you know you're blessed in your life, you want to continue those blessings in your life, what do you do? You appreciate the one who's sending you those blessings, and that will lead you to finding God, to discovering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever does not thank, whoever is ungrateful, this is a sign of someone who's ungrateful, someone who's unethical. This is why believing in God has to do with your ethics and your morality. Believing in God is very important. So we are taught to be appreciative of people in our lives, of our family, of our relatives, of our loved ones, of anyone who does anything good to you, right? That's common sense. You don't need to be religious to know that. Okay, what about the one who gave you everything that you have? What about your Lord who blessed you with everything in your life? Is He not worthy of being appreciated? How is it that some people appreciate everyone and everything in their lives, but they do not appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Thanking God is our duty. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنُشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ And whoever thanks, then this person is thanking for themselves. And whoever does blasphemy and does not thank, kafar and shukr, not believing, is opposed, is on the other side to um, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ, وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ God does not need your thanks. When you thank, you are thanking for yourself. You are going to be the first beneficiary of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? 
When you show appreciation to Allah, Allah will give you more. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises in the Quran. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٍ And your Lord has, has called out that if you think, I will give you more. And if you don't, then my punishment is severe. So this is one. If you want more blessings in your life, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, if you... When you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are acknowledging the blessings that you have. And that will make you feel better. Scholars, they say that in order for you to, to live a happy life, you have to have positive thoughts. You have to have positive, uh, you know, po positive approach towards life. And how do you do that? You do that when you appreciate the blessings that you have in your life. This is what cognitive behavior therapists say. They say that you, your moods are impacted by your thoughts. So if you have positive thoughts, if you think I'm grateful for this and I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for these things that God has given me in my life, then you're going to be a happier person. Then you're going to enjoy your life better. So this is something that's very important and this is one of the ways that we benefit from thanking, and then you also acknowledge people in your lives. You don't only acknowledge the blessing itself, but you will acknowledge the people in your life. So if you're eating a meal, you say, this meal, I'm grateful for it. But who is it that made me this meal? Who is it that provided this meal? My job, I'm, I'll be grateful for it. My wife, the husband, your children, the parents, you're going to be grateful for people in your lives. And this is also something very good. Because when you're grateful with something that you have in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow that to bless, to be blessed. A relationship, a husband and wife, when they are grateful with one another, the marriage is going to survive. But they're, when they're not grateful to one another, when they both not underappreciate one another, when they both, you know, hurt one another and they don't appreciate one another, then what's going to happen? Then the relationship is going to fall apart. If you're working at a company and you underappreciate the company and the company underappreciates you, you're going to have a fallout with one another. So it makes sense to be grateful, to appreciate whatever we have in our lives. Now, a lot of people, they say this makes sense. This is, this is, it's very clear. We have to be grateful for our blessings to continue. So why don't we do that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If I'm grateful for my mother, for my wife, the wife for her husband, for your children, the children towards their parents, for your work, for everything that you have, who is it that gave you all that you have? Isn't it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So if it's from God, then show appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah tells Luqman, anishkur lillah. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sign of the greatest wisdom. When you appreciate Allah, how do you appreciate? You appreciate by praying, you appreciate by giving charity, you appreciate by helping out other people, you appreciate by passing on the blessings that God gave you to other people. Be an agent on behalf of God. Isn't God the one who gives? You also be a giver on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Allah tells, موسى أوحى الله تعالى إلى موسى يا موسى شكرني حق شكري أو موسى thank me the way I deserve to be thanked so موسى he paused for a moment how can I thank Allah in the way that he deserves to be thanked so he says يا رب كيف أشكرك حق شكرك he asked God how do I thank you in the way that you deserve to be thanked and then he says, Laysa, he says, Ya Rab, kayfa ashkurka haqqa shukrik? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, Laysa man min shukrin ashkuruka bihi illa wa anta an amta bihi alay. Anything that I want to thank you with is a blessing that you have given me. If I thank you with my tongue, this tongue is 
a blessing that you have given me. If I thank you with my hands, this is something that you have given me. If I thank you with my money, with my finances, these are finances that you have given me. So how should I thank you when everything that I have is, is from you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Ya Musa, shakartani haqqa shukri hina alimta anna dhalika minni. O oh Musa, you have appreciated me when you know that everything that you have is from me. So Luqman became wise because of these things. And one of the most important things is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, inshallah, tomorrow, tomorrow night, we will explain some of the wisdom of Luqman when he was wise. What did he do with that wisdom? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our wisdom and to make us from the shakirin, from those who thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We'll also recite this dua of the month of Ramadan اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم اكسو كل عريان اللهم اقضي دينا كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم اصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين واغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير والى ارواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحه مع الصلوات